Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about the next uh, Quentin Tarantino film that I uh, enjoy from, you know, the, the films that, of his that I enjoy rewatching the least, the ones I love rewatching the most. And this time I'm going to talk about uh, Kill Bill. Oh, oh, there you go. Um, now, this is one film. Um, obviously, it's split in half because um, the original length uh, was about like four hours or so. And um, because of that, um, and apparently the fact that, uh, there we go, a lot of audiences uh, these days aren't. Uh, interested in seeing um, there since so many audiences aren't uh, too uh, interested in watching uh, movies that are beyond a certain length I and mean, of course this would have been like 2003 and apparently at the Cannes Film Festival it premiered at its complete length um, and put together as it was supposed to be but um once they came down to actually uh, getting the movie uh, released in theaters uh, throughout the world, the uh, decision was made to cut it in half. Um, so the first half, you know, you know, we see the bride uh, uh, tracking down uh, all these uh, those who had a hand in um, putting her in a uh, had a hand in killing. Uh, people at her wedding when um, and she's also well, pregnant of course and uh, she um, uh, is been shot in the head at the very beginning you see her bloodied and like beaten and later all these people are dead in this like, like a church and are at least placed to or at least not exactly a, like a church per se, but it looks nice enough like one, but you know, isn't as like piano and such. But you know, it, um, the place uh, she and her fiance are at, which in the second film we actually get to see that whole thing unfold. But in the first film, it's just her and she's a. Uh, on the ground, bloody and beaten, and uh, a voice uh, is talking to her, and then uh, a gunshot rings out, and she's shot in the head. But it only puts her in a coma, and four years later, she wakes up and uh, is distraught because you know her baby is gone. So, and she thinks that you know, of course, naturally, that the baby is dead. You know, um, had to be very devastating. And then um, she wants revenge on all those who had a hand in uh, killing all of her friends and fiance and the people who were there to get things going to get married and also her child. And it's a fantastic revenge tale. Um, Quentin Tarantino did an excellent uh, job with this. Um, it's, it's of course different. Um, this film is also sort of like Death Proof. You know, it does not technically take place in the world of uh, Quentin Tarantino in the sense that uh, other movies of his in the filmography are. You know, this is a movie that people of like Reservoir Dogs or Pulp Fiction would go and see. Um, though, um, considering um, Uma Thurman is in this, and what she, her character in Pulp Fiction says about this pilot she was in, it seems like, and from what many people have said, it sounds like the, the, the pilot in Pulp Fiction that she describes is actually Kill Bill. You know, um, and in many ways it seems like uh, she is fairly accurate, you know. I mean, 
her character was an expert with knives, and she is definitely an expert with knives and swords and such um, in this film. And so that's kind of a, uh, another interesting connection. And uh, everybody um, involved in this does an excellent job. Um, Michael Madsen as Bud. He does a fantastic job. You know, David Carradine as Bill. In the first half, you know, you don't even see his face. You just hear his voice and you see, like, his arm and different parts of it. You never see his actual face. And of course, if you know Carradine, you know, David Carradine looks like, then you know. But, you know, in the first movie, it's like, ooh. It's, you know, you'd be, it's sort of like elusive. Daryl Hannah, who has a uh, one eye, and then the second part we find out how she got uh, this eye, or wa lost her eye, and uh, Lucy Liu is in the first part, um, as is uh, Victoria Fox, and um, yeah, this is um, just. very good film. Um, I wanted to do both of them at the same time because, I mean, it is all one film. It's just never, of course, been released as one complete movie. It hasn't been edited that way. Um, apparently, though, aside from the Cannes Film Festival, they did um, have a, at Quentin Tarantino's uh, theater he owns in California, um, they did have a cut of a, called the whole bloody affair where you can see like for like four hours or so um both parts though the ending of the first part uh, which is a which was made as like a tease for the next part which came out six months later um, um you know that was cut because that was completely um Unneeded as was the little recap at the very beginning of the second part. Um, the first part is definitely um, the most violent of of the two. I mean, the second part has a share fair of violence, obviously, but you know, um, some have said that they don't enjoy the second part as much. I think it's actually very good. I think it actually complements the first part very well. And if we got to see the entire film edited the way it's supposed to be instead of with these extra bits uh, to it um, due to the fact that it was cut in half um, I think um, no, I, I think that at least for the first part because they did film it all at once um, but might have been in hindsight like it might have been a good idea to film some of this stuff to ensure like if it had to be cut in half which I think Quentin Tarantino I, I believe I've read this where he wasn't sold on that at first he didn't really want to do that he wanted it all out at once but um, Harvey Weinstein was able to convince him to put it out as a, a two-parter and both uh, have been very well received and enjoyed um, but I would love to see the whole bloody affair version where it's both uh, back to back or both parts not back to back but uh, put together in one and so you can just watch it um, you know I don't live in California um, and uh, I, I don't know I mean there have been people who have apparently made their own edits of the film uh, to make it all one, since it's supposed to be one movie, and I do see it as one, but you know, of course, just split in half. Um, and I think, in a way, it's unique in the fact that um, you know, many movies are made with the purpose of you know having multiple films, you know, multiple sequels. Um, this film was never really meant to have one. Um, 
um, of course, over the years, uh, Quentin Tarantino has talked about possible Volume 3, um, but he uh, hasn't made one yet, and, um, and I kind of ha- hope that he never does. Now, I know some people might be disappointed to hear somebody say they don't want to see a Volume 3, but for me, the reason is it's good the way it is now. Um, and we can only, I, I, and I like the fact that we can just guess and speculate what happens afterwards, you know. Um, you know, does the child that, um, <clears throat> Victoria Fox's character, does she return at some point and try to get revenge for the death of her mother? Um, you know, that's something that Quentin Tarantino has mentioned, like, he would, if he ever did a sequel, that's what he would, uh, or, or at least a continuation of this, that's how it would probably be, um, that, like, the overall premise, but you wanted time, but I think as, t- as things are now, I just, I'm happy with the, this as it is, I don't really, uh, want more, I never have wanted more. Even, you know, after seeing this many, many years ago for the first time, and, uh, you know, over the years of rewatching it, um, DVD and Blu-ray, the, the thought has never occurred to me that, you know, I, I should, I, I, I really want to see more. That just hasn't occurred to me. I know for many people it has, and they want to actually see it, not just talk about what could happen and whether the bride will live or die. And, you know, of course, you know, for it's Beatrix Kiddo, which is interesting, in the first film, it's bleeped. You know, in the first, or at least the first half of the or volume, first volume, it's, like, bleeped. And yet it's, you know, really not in the second volume. So that's interesting, I think, for me. Um, it's just an interesting choice, you know. It's like... Also, rewatching it recently, it's um, you can still hear what she says. Uh, like the bleep is there, but you can still get it. Even though, of course, if you've seen the second half of it um, and you know her name, but even then, I remember hearing something like "what?" what? Um, but of course, I wasn't completely sure what it was, but then upon hearing it in the other part, it's like, okay, that does sort of sound like what I've heard. And it's like a bleep, but then also, um, now I didn't put, turn on the subtitles to see if it actually has her name in it, because I've just never done that before. But it'd be interesting if it does, or if it just has like dot dot dot, or says bleep. Um, so who knows? Maybe that will be something I should do one day when I rewatch this again. Um, the action is really good. The first one again is the most violent, but that's also because of the the end of the film. You know that big fight, um, which actually is um, where Quentin Tarantino is. He is a member of the uh, Crazy Eighty Eight, but you don't get to see all of them. And I um, and I also believe I heard him laughing at some point. Uh, even before that scene, like when uh, they're all together in that little room before um, the bride shows up with the French one, French Japanese woman, and um, cuts off her arm. Like before that, they're all together in a room, and the bride is looking as to where they were, and they eventually going up, you know, before in the midst of that, you know. He, you can hear people laughing. It sounds like somebody is laughing like Quentin Tarantino. So, um, I don't know if that was intentional or maybe somebody just has a laugh that's similar to his. Um, but that, that was just something I remember uh, noticing. Um, but, um, this is an excellent film. Um, Quentin Tarantino really does his love to go from different genre genres as we've (laughs) 
as you can tell, you know, there's the grain house and there's, of course, like the crime, but of course, crime stuff is something that he is very, very uh, familiar with. Um, and here is like a kung fu martial arts uh, style film uh, with a bit of, I guess, western in the sense of like how particularly like the last half is and you know, guns and such. Um, you don't usually see guns too often in uh, samurai films. Um, though of course there are some that do, but not often. Yeah, and so I, I really uh, just in, admire and appreciate just how different he makes uh, his films, you know. You know, regardless of how you rank these films, it's really uh, it's really interesting how diverse he has been throughout his career. And, um, you know, he says his tenth film will be his last, whether that will be or not, you know, to be determined. But um, if it is, I'm just curious as to what he'll do. I know people talk about Star Trek and all, but... From what I gathered, it, that was never really meant to be uh, a directorial film um, film for him. It was just something he was going to just write and produce, but then that's just been like talks of it. But who knows? He might be completely interested in something else and want nothing to do with Star Trek at this point. I mean, you know, who knows? Uh, his mind can always change. Um, it's very interesting and different. Um, you know, he, uh, he does his best to try and not just be as predictable as possible, though I guess there are certain things you can always expect, you know, a lot of swearing, a lot of violence and blood and such. Um, those seem to be things that are a staple of Quentin Tarantino, and... This film really delivers on that. Um, so, um, if you enjoy, you know, samurai, uh, kung fu, martial art type films, this is a very good film, but of course, you know, a lot of swearing, a lot of violence, a lot of blood. And, um, yeah, beware on the off chance you're not completely interested, but, you know, if you're interested in, like, revenge stories and, um, I'm sure many people who have seen this have already know the whole plot, but on the off chance you haven't, I'm not really giving everything away. I mean, it's called Kill Bill, so um, I think we can all uh, conclude how this whole thing will end. Kind of a jip if the title was a complete lie, and no, uh, uh, Bill isn't killed. Uh, that would have been interesting, you know. It says Kill Bill, and yet when you watch the movies, oh, it, Bill's not kill. What the? Um, but it's, if anything, it's like, well, how will Bill get be killed? You know, will she succeed, or will somebody uh, beat her to it? Yeah. Anyway, um, that's really uh, all I have to say. <laughs> this is a very uh, fantastic film. Very uh, entertaining. One that I enjoy rewatching every so often, um, and um, I like how, as I'm going through these, uh, my enjoyment and fondness of these movies uh, does keep growing. That's something that I'm happy about. Because um, when you're able to rewatch something over and over, that I think that's a sign. That's uh, that's the markings of a very good film. You know, sometimes again. I mentioned before. Sometimes you watch something and it's like, yeah, it's good. But then you don't have uh, much of a desire to rewatch it again very often. But, you know, the last time, you know, this last time just rewatching this, I really just wanted to wait a few days and then rewatch it again. That's just how um, this was for me. Um, and I'm sure uh, that'll con I, I have a feeling that will continue with these uh, films. That's really it. Um, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope all of you are having a uh, great day. 
Um, hope all of you will have a great weekend. Um, or had a great weekend, I should say. And, um, yeah, I will uh, see you all next time. Take care. Bye.